Hello everyone, I'm Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood GI Joe reviewer. And for this video, I'm going to be expressing my anticipation for the upcoming third edition to Mark Palermo's Ultimate Guide to GI Joe 1982 through 1994. Now here I have my second edition, a really old copy from 2009, and I actually did a review of it back in 2010. Boy, that was such a long time ago, quite frankly. Uh, hopefully my quality has been up since then. But the fact of the matter is, is that despite how much errors which I might have pointed out and how critical I was, I still highly recommended the book. It's really easy to recommend this book because not only is it an identification guide, a price guide, but it also has a bit of history for the G.I. Joe toy line as well. It has history from Hasbro, as well as Larry Hama, the guy who wrote the file cards for the figures, as well as the comic books, which influenced how the toy line progressed over the years. Now, as you can see, my edition is kind of uh, tatty. You can barely read the spine now. And that's because not only did I recommend it to my viewers, I also actually physically gave this to like four or five different people. So over the years, this thing has actually created a couple of collectors as well as some people who were just, you know, interested in the G.I. Joe toy line and toys in general from 1980s through 1990s. This thing is just a, a very interesting, well-made, and very, very well put together book. However, like I pointed out in the review, you know, there are a few errors. Now, granted, um, I was only collecting 1982 through 1985 up until that point. So that's kind of where I was focusing, you know, the errors and possibly changes which needed to be made to the book. And now that, well, since I started collecting from about 2011 and upwards for uh, all the other years, I found quite a few more errors and possible changes which really need to be made to the book. Still, I mean, this thing is a thick book covering over 500 figures, 200 vehicles and play sets. Nobody's perfect. It's going to have some errors, and I totally expect that. To be honest, it doesn't have as many errors as I really thought it would. But here are my predictions for what the third edition really needs to change in order for it to correct some of the errors, some of the format changes, which I would really like to see, as well as maybe some additions. Now, granted, the additions are just me dreaming because, like I said, this thing is already a very thick book covering like hundreds, pretty much like a thousand different items in here. But first, let's start off with the most important thing, corrections to some of the errors. Grand Slam's waist is incorrect. Flash is missing paint on its arm. Short Fuse name should be in G.I. Joe Blue. The line, many collectors consider a Falcon Glider to be complete with this band, should be complete without this band. Clutch's name should be in blue. Battle Gear Accessory Pack number 2's text is misaligned. The photo of Zartan's junk box should have the skis attached. The Manta does not come with the stickers as shown. The Forward Observer has a graphic error. The line, the file cards for this set were not printed on the back of the box, but Claymore's is on the back of the Special Mission Brazil box. The Terror Drone jail doors are shown installed backwards. Gung Ho 2's sticker sheet is upside down. The first Steel Brigade file card sheet shown is blue, but sun moisture discolored, not intentionally tan. The first Steel Brigade sheet had typewritten traits, abilities, and personality, as opposed to the pre-printed titles of later versions. The maggot description, the swiveling yellow radar dish, should get rid of the word yellow. The Persuader is in no way associated with Battle Force 2000. The orange tube shown with the crossfire is from the 1979 Kenner Star Wars Droid Factory. It's not a G.I. Joe part at all. Spearhead's knife is missing. The Phantom X-19's landing gear lever does not activate the air brakes, only the engines. The Warthog is missing the top gun. The Tiger Cat has incorrect, easily lost information. Seems copied from the Vamp Mark II. The Alley Viper shield is missing. Slaughter's Marauder's Armadillo Missile Launcher Stabilizers are parts frames meant to be removed and discarded if you see the instructions. 
The Razorbacks connector arms are assembled upside down. Understandable, a lot of people do that. Darklon's evader is missing the seatbelt, and a mention of it in the description. The Battlefield Robot Devastator's text about downward-facing main hoverlift rotors should be for the Battlefield Robot hovercraft. Also, the Devastator did not come with a seatbelt. The Rock Viper is missing a pistol. The black stand shown with Heavy Duty should be with Grunt 3. Snake Eyes 4 is missing the photo and mention of the black stand. The Desert Scorpion is missing photos of the missile and hose. All 92 basic figures should not be labeled as Battlecore. Dojo's name should be in blue. The Cobra Rack has a graphic error. And finally, the Patriot's bumper is assembled upside down. Oh, as an interesting side note, I might not have pointed out any of the errors in the text where it has some typos or grammatical errors simply because the ebook version of the second edition actually corrects quite a bit of that. However, if there are any errors which you think that I might have missed, please remember to put it down in the comments. Now, not quite as important as making changes to those errors are changes to the format which I would like to see addressed. Now, as you can see here, this is the last page. That's right, this, this isn't the page, this is actually the back cover. When is the last time you saw a book with just so cram-packed with information that relevant information is on the very last page before the cover? I bet you haven't. Most companies really don't do that. They usually have like one pacer page or something like that. Crowds Publishing, please give Mark Belemo more pages in order to put his information into. Please, I'm begging you. Speaking of the back of the book, the number one change I'd like to see is the inclusion of an index. Even Mark Belemo wanted one for the second edition. The G.I. Joe ephemera parts at the beginning of the 1982 through 1986 sections are really cool, but taking it out would free up more space. There is no ephemera for the 1987 through 1994 shown for that very reason. The Vamp and Hal Sears 2-pack should be in the 1984 section, which would hopefully allow for a larger photo of that Vamp variant. I'd like to see all Balagiric 3-packs 1 through 6 photographed loose, like everything else in the book. I want mail-away variant entries to be more consistent. For example, the Hiss mail-away variant is shown in the 1983 Hiss listing, but the 1991 mail-away lifeline should be a footnote of the 1986 entry. Same thing with the 1993 Triple T variant. The 1988 Storm Shadow 2 should be placed back in the G.I. Joe section, only assuming that there is an index to help avert any confusion. Also, his title should be in G.I. Joe blue, regardless of where the entry is. And finally, I hope this is reworded for clarity. The 1989 Benny's Home and Auto Exclusive was liquidated soon afterward at many stores like BJ's Wholesale Club and Child World Child Palace, and possibly more retailers. Just like the 1985 Toss and Cross Bridge Layer was first a Sears exclusive in late 1984. And finally, here is my long wish list of additions that I would hope to see in the third edition of the G.I. Joe Ultimate Guide. Now, one very interesting thing is that in the first edition, Mark Belemo writes a lot about the uh, real-world military counterparts to some of the G.I. Joe's vehicles, which unfortunately in the second edition is not there. They've been excised for space. So I'd like to see a lot of those mentions being put back into the books. Now, you have to understand that every year we learn something new about this old toy line. So every year there's a, a new variation which comes to light and I'm sure Mark Belemo wouldn't have known about some of these things or wouldn't have had access to a proper proof of some of these variations at the time of the writing of the second edition. So I would like to see some updates to some of the variations which have been discovered and documented over the years. I mentioned and photo that the Ram, Flak, and Jump had small box variants. Their item numbers ended with .01. I mentioned and photo of the JCPenney Cobra 3-pack dark green bazooka variant. I know he has access to one. Please photograph it, Mark. I mentioned the Mobat is based on the high-tech MBT-70 prototype tank. Photos of more variants of the Pocket Patrol Pack with the squared off sticker logo and 1986 through 89 logo. 
a photo to go along with the mention of the Sky Striker nose gun variants, mention and photo of Fang variant with ridge skis and missing rotor shaft detail, mention and photo of Tripwire's patch variant, mention and photo of the variant Falcon Glider blueprint colors, photo of Duke Slee's variant to go along with the mention, photo and mention of Spirit's patch variant, mention that the Rattler was based on the A10 Thunderbolt 2 slash Warthog, an aftermarket value for the Slugger Mail-Away variant, mention and photo of the Skyhawk Mail-Away variant with darker green body, ridged skis, and bar between the guns, photo and mention of the Mail-Away Stinger with dark grey body and all black parts, mention in the Vamp Mark II's easily lost parts steering wheel, and better photo of the 1989 Mail-Away variant, no offence. Mention of the photographed Silver Mirage's tiny missile-like grenade in the description and easily lost parts. Mention and photo of the Bridge Layer's variant lifting arm. Mention and photo of the Flight Pod's sticker variant. Mention of 1987 re-releases of Hawk, sometimes coming with Chuckles Pistol. It's a factory error, just like the as-yet-unproven 85 Bazooka quote-unquote variant, but that's just my opinion. Mention and photo of Night Raven landing gear lever and drone variants. Mention and photos of the Sears Dreadnought ground assault set ram sidecar variant. Photo of Slipstream head variant. Dr. Mindbender's cape variant. And the Motor Viper's head color variant. Those three had mentions but no photos. Mention and photo of the yellow painted neck variant of Serpentor. Mention and photo of Avalanche's leg paint variant. Mention and photo of Steel Brigade D version variant with the recoil gun. Mention and photo of the Defiant Shell Cockpit Canopy variant. Mention and photo of the Sea Rays Macross Valkyrie VF1 chest part Easter egg. Photo the Bug Sub Detached. Mention and photo of the Phantom X19's landing gear lever variant. Mention of the Warthog AIFV being based on the real world AAV 7A1. Mention of the badge sculpt on the Brazil sourced Slaughter's Marauders Mutt removed from the 1984 mold. Mention and photo of the Python Trooper Grey Rifle variant. The one shown in the chapter spread is a Balgear accessory pack rifle. You thought I wouldn't catch that, didn't you, Mark? Photo of the Condor Z25 split apart. Photo of the Raider Scout detached and the rest in missile mode. Mention that the Thunderclap was based on the M65 280mm towed nuclear cannon nicknamed Atomic Annie. Photo of Overlord's Dictator separated. Photo of Destro's Dominator in helicopter mode. Mention and perhaps photo of the General's electronic lights and sound box that takes four AA batteries. Photo of the Mobile Battle Bunker in bunker mode. Photo of the Retaliator's capture arm in action. Photo of the motorized battle wagon cannon shown detached. Mention of the Sonic Fighters A874 Apache mold being a reuse of Hasbro's 1989 Flying Fighters A864. Photo of the swapped colors variant Barracuda, plus mention and photo of the variant round tip missiles. Photo of Fort America in fort mode. Mention that the Storm Eagle is based on Northrop McConnell Douglas's YF-23. Photo of Keel Hall's mentioned patch variant. Photo of the Creator Cobra's file card sheet, just like the Steel Brigade entry. Photo of the collector's kit case contents and mention that the weapons tree and book were unique to the set. Mention and photo of the Star Brigade armor bot swap blue gold parts variant. Photo of the swap color variant of the Scorpion ATV. Mention and photo of Stalker 4's paint variants. And finally, a photo and mention of the Star Brigade Power Fighters Techno Viper Yellow Plastic Factory Sample Figures. It's rare, like the 1992 Echo Warriors Deep Six Killer Whale Factory Sample Variant, which did get a mention. Whew, would you look at the aftermarket values of a second edition? It just goes to show you how crazy popular this book is, and also how desperate we need a new version at the retail price. Well, I can't wait for the October release to see what I got right and what I got wrong. See you soon.